of the challenges of understanding RIP timers is the fact that it takes a while for routes to expire and sometimes we get distracted and don't know the exact debug commands so we can see exactly what's happening. In this really quick tutorial, although I realize we don't use RIP a lot in the real world anymore, but for certification and for making sure we have it down, I want to make sure you're clear on how to test it, what the timers do, and then verify the results. So I've got this beautiful network, and it's got four routers, and they've got some networks between them, and we're going to implement RIP. So we're going to start off by removing any other routing protocols and putting in RIP version 2. So we'll do that, let the network converge for just a second. It won't take very long. And back to the commands I just issued, I'm putting in RIP version 2. I'm saying no auto summary. Please include all interfaces that have an IP address. Network 0000 is a shortcut for saying any interfaces. So instead of saying network 23 or network 12 or network 1, I simply use network 000. It says everybody's on board. Now, the other challenge that we're going to overcome right now is how long it takes for RIP to converge and how long it takes for the output to be generated that we're expecting. So timers, basic, is the command we'd use to change the timers. Now, in a production environment, you're not going to use RIP. So in a test environment, why not change these timers so you don't have to wait forever to see the results? Let's review what the timers do. The update timers, how often do I send updates? Great. The invalid timer right here is how long, since I haven't seen any updates for a network, do I consider it as an invalid route and possibly down? That's when it shows up in your routing table as network is possibly down. When that timer expires and we haven't learned about that network, in this case, 15 seconds. By default, that's 180 seconds, three minutes. No, no, no wonder nobody wants to test this. You have to wait three minutes for a network to disappear. The other kicker is this. This is the uh, invalid timer for a route not showing up. See, R3, here's the big challenge. If R3, if we just shut down RIP or if we shut down this interface, 333, FA10, FA it wouldn't just not advertise that route, R3 does a triggered update. It sends a poisoned route. And as a result, R4 says, okay, thanks for the info, kills it, and it's done. So if you want to play with things like the hold down timer and the flush timer, we need to make sure that we train a router up here to simply stop saying anything about that network. You can pull the cable or use another technique that I'll show you that's a lot easier here in a moment. Then what happens after the invalid timer kicks off? Well, after 15 seconds, I should say, that we haven't seen a route, that route is marked invalid. What kicks off next is a new timer called the hold down timer. The hold down timer is simply a router saying, I'm not going to believe updates about that, that network, the one that I just lost, the one that we just went invalid for a few moments ago. I'm not going to believe any new information about that network, except for a poisoned route, for 60 seconds. Now, that means that if R3 dies, he blows up, the smoke is let out, and he is no longer advertising anything. R2, because R2 is connected to the 23 network, if there was a switch here, he'd still have link. R2 would be advertising the 23 network to R1, who would advertise to R4, and R4 would say, oh, I can get to the 23 network in a hop count of two. But until that hold down timer expires, R4 is not going to believe that new information. So this is a timeout for the network to just chill out for that specific route. Don't believe updates that have an inferior or less than a less metric than you used to have. So currently R4, if we take a look, if we do a show IP, look at that, show IP route for RIP, you'll notice that the 333 network, oh, I think the 23, the 23 network is reachable right here through R3, 34003, and it's one hop away. If we were going to reach that same network going through R1, it would be two hops away. So R4 chose this route, has a better metric. If R3 completely blew up and went away, R4, until the hold down timer expires of 60 seconds, it would not believe new information. So then if it doesn't believe new information, great. After 60 seconds, R4 is going to start believing the route through R1. But check it out. If R3 really blew up, the 333 network would never be advertised by anybody because R3 is gone. So how long does that route of 333 stay in the routing table as possibly down? And the answer is until the garbage collector says enough is enough. So the garbage collector 
or the flush timers, they call it in Cisco, the flush timer starts every time we get a new update. That's way back here at the beginning. So the flush timer says, I haven't seen an update for 3.3.3.3 or whatever network we're focused on. I haven't seen one for, golly, 120 seconds. I'm going to flush this route from the routing table. And that's it. That's the timers. The update timer, the invalid timer, which, if expired, kicks off the hold down timer, which says I'm not going to learn anything for 60 seconds. And then after it comes out of hold down, the route could still be in the routing table, depending on when the flush timer comes along. And that's 120 seconds after the last update was seen. So that's all configured. Our network's fully converged. Let me show you how to test this. So I'm going to take R4. And on R4, I'm going to put in these commands. I want to see the time and date stamps. I want to set the clock to 0000. And I want to do a debug IP routing. That's so we can see the details of exactly what's going on. I'm also going to put in a little script here that's going to show me some relevant information very, very quickly. My updates are coming in every two seconds. So here on R4, if I want to see information regarding my routing protocols, the date and time, and my routing table for RIP, it can go ahead and show it to me with just pasting that in. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We need to make R3 be quiet. So here's how we're going to do it. So R, we'll go to router RIP. We'll say passive interface default. What that's going to do, it's going to tell R3, be very, very quiet. Don't tell anybody anything from a RIP perspective. And R2 and R4 will just think that R3 fell off the face of the earth and any routes we were receiving are going to time out and go invalid. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to issue this command and then this command. So what I did is I, I just issued this, and then I did passive interface on R3. So here's the clock. It's at one minute exactly. Fantastic. Our last update was approximately zero seconds ago. So our starting point for the clock is a great reference. It could be a second or two off, and that's perfectly fine, but it'll be very, very close. So what's happening is when 15 seconds go by, we are going to go ahead and put those routes into hold down. Now, they're, they're marked as or invalid and possibly down. If we look at the routing table right now, it would look like this. So if we look at the two routes for 333 3, and 23, they're both marked as possibly down, and they're going to stay that way until either we get a better update or a new update or the flush timer. Now, what's happening is we just started hold down, and that hold down started at... 1 minute and 21 seconds. So 1 minute and 21 seconds, we started hold down. So that should end approximately 2 minutes and 21 seconds. That's when they should come out of hold down. And then R4 will start believing, if there is other information about these networks, he'll start believing it. So we're looking for 2 minutes and 21 seconds approximately. It's going to be very, very close. It, the specs for RFC, for our RIP, say it can be up to five seconds off for updates and so forth to avoid synchronization. But there we go. There's two minutes and 23 seconds. This was one minute and 21. So it's, again, it's extremely close. Now, it came out of hold down. So R4 said, oh, okay, the route's out of hold down for the 23 network. I'm now learning it through R1. It's got a worse metric. The metric is two, but that's okay because it's the only route I have. And now that route's in our routing table. So if we do our show command again, our route now shows for the 23 network as coming from 14.001 as our next hop. Now, what about this network here, 3333? Well, garbage collector, that clock has started since the last time we got an update. So that guy is cooking. And when we hit two minutes, let's scroll up. We got a moment. So our first timestamp was just about the one minute mark. So at approximately the three minute mark, give or take a couple seconds, that route should be flushed. Oh, there we go. How convenient. So 306. So the updates that we started here, I, I did the show command, then I did passive. We may have gotten another update because they're coming every two seconds right before the output. So that would explain at least a couple seconds of that. And there's the 306. But check this out. The reason I put these timers the way I did is because there's no mathematical organization to them. For example, updates are two. These are 15, that's 60 for the hold down, 120 for the flush, just to demonstrate that, that these timers really are doing what they say they're doing. So the route is now gone from the routing table for three. If we did a show command again, we have the 23 network 
the three network is no longer there, possibly down, and that's because the flush timer came along and wiped them out. So that's it. That's the details. A couple of key notes. One, if we bring back our three, which we'll do, we'll say no passive interface default, and updates are every two seconds, so R4 is going to get that new route quite quickly. There we go. And if we went to R3 and just did a shutdown, let me just show you real quick. Interface FA1 slash 0, and we'll do a shut. We'll go back to R4. You'll notice that we are going to get a poisoned route immediately for that network. And I was looking for the RIP update, but I don't have debug IP RIP on. So the poison route came in, and R4 got it. It was a triggered update, and he said, great, I'll delete it, and it's gone. No hold down because it's toast. The garbage collector didn't have to track it. It's just completely removed. And that's why it's tough often to test with RIP because we shut down interfaces, and we're expecting hold down to start, and we can't see it, and that will take some of the mystery out. Hey, thanks for listening. It's been a blast. I've appreciated your time, and I wish you the best of success in all of your studies.